testing one two three is it right ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಶುಭೋದಯ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಜಯನಗರ ಕಾಲೇಜಿನಿಂದ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ನಿಂದ ಹತ್ತು ದಿವಸಗಳ ಒಂದು ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಆ್ಯಡೆಡ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಈ ಒಂದು ಉದ್ಘಾಟನಾ ಸಮಾರಂಭಕ್ಕೆ ಮುತ್ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಅತಿಥಿಗಳಾಗಿ ಆಗಮಿಸಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ನಾವು ವಿನಯಪೂರ್ವಕ ವಿನಯಪೂರ್ವಕವಾಗಿ ವಿನಂತಿಸಿಕೊಂಡಾಗ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವಿಜಯಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ಕೊಟ್ವಾಗಿ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಅವರು ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ದ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಡಿಕಲ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನಿಕ್ಸ್ ಬಿ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಫಾರ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಇವರು ತುಂಬ ಸಂತೋಷದಿಂದ ಒಪ್ಪಿಕೊಂಡು ಈ ಸಮಾರಂಭಕ್ಕೆ ಆಗಮಿಸಿದ್ದಾರೆ ನಿಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲರ ಪರವಾಗಿ ಅವರನ್ನು ಈ ಸಮಾರಂಭಕ್ಕೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತಿಸುತ್ತೇನೆ ಹಾಗೆ ಸಮಾರಂಭದ ಅಧ್ಯಕ್ಷತೆಯನ್ನು ನಮ್ಮ ನಿಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲರ ನೆಚ್ಚಿನ ಪ್ರಾಂಶುಪಾಲರಾದ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವೈ ಸಿ ಕೆ ಕಮಲಾ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಅವರು ವಹಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಅವರಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ವಿನಂತಿ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ತೇನೆ ಹಾಗೂ ಈ ಸಮಾರಂಭಕ್ಕೆ ಉದ್ಘಾಟಕರಾಗಿ ಆಗಮಿಸಿರುವ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವಿಜಯಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ಪಟ್ವಾಗಿ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಅವರ ಸಂಕ್ಷಿಪ್ತ ಪರಿಚಯವನ್ನು ಸಮಾರಂಭಕ್ಕೆ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಳ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಅವರಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ವಿನಂತಿಸುತ್ತೇನೆ ಎಲ್ರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ನಾವು ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಮುಂದಿನ ವಾರದಿಂದ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಶುರು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಕೂಡ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಶುರು ಆಗೋಗಿದೆ ನಿಮಗೆ ಇವತ್ತಾಗಲೇ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಆ್ಯಡೆಡ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ನಿಮ್ಮ ರೆಗ್ಯುಲರ್ ಪಠ್ಯಕ್ರಮದ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಅದನ್ನು ನಾವು ನಿಮಗೆ ಮಾಡಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಪ್ರತಿ ವರ್ಷ ಯಾಕಂತಂದರೆ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಔಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಎ ಅಂಡರ್ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಜುಯೇಟ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಯುವರ್ ರೆಗ್ಯುಲರ್ ಅಕಾಡೆಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ಯು ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಾ that something extra should be useful to you and also useful to society in both the ways adanna naavu yochane madadaga yenu madona namma makkalige anta we all felt day in and day out we come across hundreds of medical equipments starting from thermometer every house has a thermometer nowadays most of the houses have glucometers and we frequently come across blood pressure monitoring machine suppose if you have elders we take them to hospital for x rays we take them to hospital for ecg okay treadmill test MRI scanning, CT scanning, these are all very common words. We go to hospital, we take some report, we will not be knowing how it works, we submit it to doctor, doctor gives us the treatment. Suppose if you can understand how the machine works, we can also understand how the body works. That is multidimensional. Multidimensional. ಆಮೇಲೆ ನೀವು ಇದನ್ನು ಅರ್ಥ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದ್ರಿಂದ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಪರಿಸರದಲ್ಲಿರೋ ಎಲ್ರಿಗೂ ಇದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನೀವು ಹೇಳ್ಬೋದು ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಆ್ಯಡಿಂಗ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಆ್ಯಡೆಡ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟ್ರೂಲಿ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಆ್ಯಡೆಡ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಇದನ್ನು ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಿ ಡಿವೈಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೈಲಿ ಯುಟಿಲಿಟಿ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಹೈಂಡ್ ದ ಡಿವೈಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೈಲಿ ಯುಟಿಲಿಟಿ ಇದ್ರ ಮೇಲೆ ಒಂದು ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಆ್ಯಡ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಆ್ಯಡೆಡ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಅಂತ ಡಿಸೈನ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಎಕ್ವಿಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ಔಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಸಿಲೆಬಸ್ಸನ್ನು ಡಿಸೈನ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಯಾರನ್ನು ನಾವು ಇನ್ವೈಟ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ನನ್ ಅದರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ವಿಜಯಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ಕುಟಬಾಗಿ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಡಿಸೈಡ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ವಿ ವಿಜಯಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ಕುಟಬಾಗಿ ಅವರು ಶಿ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಡಿಕಲ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಾನಿಕ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಬಿ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಇಲ್ಲೇ ಹತ್ತಿರದಲ್ಲಿ ಆದರೆ ಅದಷ್ಟೇ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅವರ ಅಚೀವ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಫಂಟಾಸ್ಟಿಕ್ she obtained her ug degree in electronics and communication from sidganga institute of technology tumkur pg in biomedical instrumentation from sjce mysore and she holds a phd from vmu university salem but she worked in indian institute of science largely her experimentation was done in indian institute of science and the thesis was titled independent component analysis of 
EEG signals. She will explain what it is now. She has more than 20 publications at international and national journals and conferences. She has undertaken collaborative projects with Raman Research Institute, Nimhans, Art of Living, Veda Vignana Mahavidya Pita of Esvasa and many other institutions. She has executed projects for DST, Department of Science and Technology on VGST, funded projects. Okay. Presently, and uh, presently she is at the BMS uh, College for Engineering. She is in various committees of the BMS College for Engineering and also on many organizations she is working, including IEEE chapter and she has also worked as treasurer for a particular unit. This is her academic achievement. Apart from academics, she is an avid traveler. She has traveled quite a good number of countries. Not just that, she is a nature lover. The last but not the least, she is also a good scuba diver. <laughs> she is a scuba diver. See, that is the passion, okay? It's a passion for teaching and passion for exploration. So that's complementary to one another. So what it gives you as the information is, you can excel, okay? You can excel in various fields. So you should have interest in that. If you start thinking, it comes. You must, other can extend on course Martha Idi Vinim Gesh. Talks and shares on course Martha Idi Vi, other chair color and pair. Adarigalanu Kuda now here Kurti for all students. Okay. So, is to versatile Agirta Kanta Vijay Lakshmi or Nakel Kundaga, Tumba Santoshwagi, Wopi Namge Idina Udhatane Madi, inaugural lecture Udhatne and Rabri Udhatne Madadala, but delivering a lecture she will be inaugurating. She is so uh, considerate. Even the subject in our Yeshtu Prithastara and other care, our Yen Heladragota, Nano Nimge, either care resource persons called Lanta, voluntary Agi Keladru, Andre, medical electronics, Sale Idoratra, Nan either care Aneka course girl and a Mars Kotina, Stella, Ega Kutkonda and Heladro, students na batch medical see Nama Lavali organ and a laboratory Mars Kotinenta. Does it needs an upload? So that comes from inside. Only a teacher who has passion can come out with such things. Yes, yes, yes. So interactivity interact you are a resource person. You are Purpur Kwada, Swagatwana, Kortini Netravati Indra.
ಯಾವುದೇ ಒಂದು ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ಮಾಡಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಶ್ರಮ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಈ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮವನ್ನು ಡಿಸೈನ್ ಮಾಡುವುದಕ್ಕೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಟೀಚರ್ಸು ಇನ್ವಾಲ್ವ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಆಲ್ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಅಧ್ಯಾಪಕರಿಗೂ ಕೂಡ ಈ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ಅಭಿನಂದನೆಗಳನ್ನು ಸಲ್ಲಿಸ್ತಾ ಹೃತ್ಪೂರ್ವಕವಾಗಿ ಸ್ವಾಗತವನ್ನು ಕೋರ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಕಾಲೇಜಿನ ವೈಸ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಾಲ್ ಆದಂಥ ಬೆಲ್ಲದವರು ಬಹಳ ಶ್ರಮ ವಹಿಸಿ ಇದನ್ನು ಹಿಂದೆ ನಿಂತು ಇದನ್ನು ಒಂದು ಸ್ಪಷ್ಟ ರೂಪಕ್ಕೆ ತಂದಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಸೊ ಅವರಿಗೂ ಸಹ ಹೃತ್ಪೂರ್ವಕವಾದ ಸ್ವಾಗತವನ್ನು ಕೋರ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಇನ್ನು ಈ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳಿಗಾಗಿ ನಿಮಗೋಸ್ಕರ ನೀವೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಸಹ ಆಸಕ್ತಿಯಿಂದ ಬಂದಿದ್ದೀರಿ ನಿಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಸಹ ಹೃತ್ಪೂರ್ವಕವಾದ ಸ್ವಾಗತವನ್ನು ಕೋರಿ ಈಗ ವೇದಿಕೆಯನ್ನು ವಿಜಯಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ಅವ್ರಿಗಾಗಿ ತೆರವುಗೊಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ a very good morning to everyone uh, the dignitaries on the dais and off the dais and my dear students uh, it's my honor today and i am a uh, pleasure to inaugurate this value added course on the science behind the medical devices which are used on a daily basis uh, here i thought uh, before uh, yeah going to uh, just to know the behind the science behind the equipments you should know the fundamentals like what is the electronics behind it and how does these instruments works okay here i am going to present you uh, on a biomedical signal acquisition yeah this is what i am going to present you biomedical signal acquisition pro pre processing techniques and analysis it may be little bit too high for you uh, just if you have any doubts during the presentation please you can raise your hand and ask any questions during the presentation itself okay you are free to ask any questions during the presentation yeah uh, we have a biomedical branch uh, in bangalore uh, only five to six colleges have this course but ours is a very leading uh, college wherein all the placements are happening we have 60 students in take of ug and pg 18 students every year uh, there is a much demand happening to this course and students are not by chance they are coming by choice they are entering into this stream okay when you say biomedical this is an amalgamation of like you need a, as bio bio word is there you want a science students to be there which are very much into keen into bio, uh, the biology okay and uh, medical uh, medical equipments biomedical engineering when we say the medical related concepts also you should know that is anatomy and physiology science concept and instrumentation concept as well as all these instruments nowadays uses software okay so computer uh, students also requires so biomedical engineering is a multidisciplinary an amalgamation of a science uh, background uh, candidate and a computer knowledge and an instrumentation knowledge electronics knowledge everything okay just i am going to explain you uh why it is called as a biomedical signal okay i think as a science uh, as a science student uh, you uh, know about the signal can okay signal is a quantity which gives some information right uh, now i am uh, let us say speech signal now i am talking and you are listening the speech signal is a signal which is conveying some information to you and uh, there are uh, uh, signals different kinds of a signal like physical signals uh, okay like uh, example physical signals in the sense uh, like example temperature you take pressure you take okay humidity ph value all those are called as a physical signals which give some information now next we'll come to the biomedical signal why these signals are called as a biomedical signal because these signals are acquired from the human beings okay bio means the living things okay so biomedical signal okay when we when we say biomedical signals there are thousands of biomedical signals are there for example as uh, madam was telling ecg ecg is a biomedical signal okay emg ecg all those things the next slides are there i'm uh, definitely going to explain you you'll be knowing yeah next slide please 
I am. I'm. When, you, when we say biomedical signal, uh, there are different types of a signal. For example, you have an 1D signal, okay? That is one-dimensional signal. You might have studied in a physics, right? Like a sinusoidal signal. What are the quantities uh, required to express a sinusoidal signal? One is a time variant, another one is an amplitude, right? Okay, this is as the signal is a time dependent, it is called as a one-dimensional signal. In a biomedical signal, you have ACG, EEG, EOG, EMG are few examples of a one-dimensional signal. And for example, you have a 2D image, that is two-dimensional signal. In a two-dimensional signal, uh, example for a two-dimensional signal is an image, okay? Like for example, you have an X-ray image and this is an MRI image. This is called as a 2D because it, it requires an amplitude, time information as well as a pixel value, that is on a plane it is represented. That's why it is called as a 2D image. Next you have a 3D image wherein you have a depth information. For example, MRI images are taken slice by slice with a, a thickness of 2 mm. All those slices when merged together, we can able to get a depth information. That's why it is called as a 3D image. So in a biometric signal you have 1D image, 2D image and a 3D image. Now we have 4D images also there. Okay, with the CT images. Okay, medical device. When it uh, comes to the medical devices, these are classified based on the risk associated in the medical instruments, okay? For example, you have a class one with a low risk, okay? For example, all the medical devices which comes under class one category are low risk. For example, wheelchair, okay? Wheelchair, band-aid and uh, glasses, frames uh, used in a laboratory, all those comes under a class one uh, category of medical devices because with a low risk. And you have class uh, one, yes, one M and one R, that is low medium risk, okay? Like for example, personal protection kits, stethoscopes, surgical uh, forceps, all those comes under a, with a medium risk equipments. Next you have a class two, like, okay, you have a medium risk equipments. Like for example, you have a orthodontic wires, surgical gloves, okay, all these comes under a uh, class 2A and you have class 2B with a medium and high risk, okay. These are like orthopedic nails and plates, okay, intraocular lens, incubators for babies. This comes under a medium and high risk and you have a class 3 which are high risk, okay. For example, the ECG pacemakers, prosthetic heart valves, cardiovascular structures, brain spectrals, these comes under a class 3 which are high risk. Okay, for example, self-certified. These, we can use, a normal man can use this, okay, self-certified uh, devices. But when you want to use this, the high-risk equipments, we need a medical assistant to use all those equipments. For example, we can't use like ECG machine or an EEG machine, we need a medical assistant, an operator for to make use of those devices. And apart from this, these equipments, we can't use like, uh, when I say you, you or me as a biomedical engineer, today if we uh, uh, prototype a device, okay, any device, this has to be approved by two standards, okay. Now we have an European standard and an American standard. We need an approval from those uh, uh, approval bodies, okay. Uh, until then we cannot use those, okay. And for this approval, it usually takes five to six years for approval for any medical device. And apart from that, a research has to be done before four years. So any equipment has to come to market will definitely take a 10 years, which uh, uh, which, in, which when comes to our hands, we can use it. Uh, the Behind that, a work might have happened 10 years earlier, okay? Uh, so see the complexity of the medical device. But other equipments or instruments, we can use like four to five years in a gap. But medical equipments, there are a lot of issues, okay? Ethical issues are there, trials has to be done, all those things have to be taken care because this should not harm any subjects which are, we are using, okay? That's why it is very, very complex. And even though Modi says, make in India, the many startups and innovation companies are there with the many products. Now we have already into the, not into the market, they've all applied for the patent as well as for approval. Definitely after, after four or five years, we see our indigenous, or a medical equipments which are developed by Indian biomedical engineers. Definitely it's going to happen. 
but still we are not uh, using more equipments which are manufactured in India. In another uh, five years, definitely we may use uh, equipments which are developed in India, okay? This is regarding the medical device classification. And next we'll come to how we are going to acquire the biomedical signal, okay? See when uh, I think most of us are uh, gone to hospital for us all, maybe for your parents, okay? When we go to hospital, the first thing what they, what they do, they see the blood pressure and a heartbeat with a stethoscope. And once, uh, if something, if they diagnose a complexity in the person, they'll uh, uh, suggest to us to take an ECG, okay? Okay, so how, how we acquire this signal? First, the patient is there. Next, for the patient, they attach a transducer or an electrodes, okay? Transducer is the one. Okay, transducer. The next is an isolation amplifier. Isolation amplifier. Next, amplifier and filters. A to D converters. Filtering to remove artifacts. Detection and events of a components. Analysis of events. All these things I'll, I'm going to explain, okay? Now, the patient. What we call in our study subject or a patient. Now, the transducer. As a science student, you should know, or I think already you might have studied in a physics some the concepts of transducers you had in your syllabus, transducers. Okay, there are uh, different types of a uh, transducers. The main function of a transducer is which converts one form of NSG to other form. Whereas in a biomedical, all the transducers converts chemical energy. Because uh, I'll uh, uh, explain in the next slides why it is a chemical energy. Okay, which here in a, mainly in a biomedical application, this transducer performs a function of converting chemical energy to electrical energy that goes to an isolation amplifier, okay? Because here all this electronic circuit has to be separated from the patient, okay? Because it has to uh, protect the uh, subject or a patient from a shock, okay? Uh, so from isolation amplifier, next comes amplifiers and filters. All the biomedical signals are of very, very low frequency and low amplitude signal, okay? It is in the order of millivolts and with a low frequency of uh, 0 to uh, 0.5 to 100 hertz to the maximum it can go up to 1 kilohertz. Uh, so uh, we need a amplifiers. Because of this very low uh, amplitude and uh, very low frequency, these amplifiers are required. And why we need a filter is for each of the signal requires uh, different frequency bands has to be extracted, okay? That's why we need an amplifiers and filters. Amplifiers in the sense, we need an amplifier which amplify the signal up to thousands and sometimes more than thousands, the minimum thousand times it has to be amplified. Why? Because as I told you, it is in the order of millivolts and microvolts. In order to drive all these electronic circuits, you might have uh, done few experiments in an analog circuits and digital circuits. The minimum voltage you give is five volts, right? From the battery or from the AC supply, you are going to give five volts. So these millivolts, cannot drive these electronic circuits. So it has to be bring from millivolts to, uh, so millivolts and microvolts to volts. That's why we require a amplifiers, very high gain amplifiers, okay? Not an ordinary amplifiers. That's why all these medical equipments cost is so high because we require the, not an ordinary amplifiers. We require a very high precision amplifiers in the medical devices, okay? Then filters are nothing but whatever the frequency band we are intended or we require that can be extracted. Next is analog to digital conversion. Whatever the signal we acquire, it is in the analog form. You know in an analog signal, the definition of an analog signal, how do you define analog signal? Analog signal is the one which has got a value at every instant of time, right? That's what you are studying in physics. So, so in order to run these uh, electronic processor or uh, processors, okay, that is a digital signal processors, we need to convert an analog signal to digital conversion because we are using a processors, digital processor to process a signal. So <coughs> why digital signal processors means? Because of the fastness. It's fastness, we use a digital processors. So we are converting A to analog to digital. Then filtering to remove artifacts. What are these artifacts? I'll uh, come to next, okay? Artifacts are nothing but a noises embedded in the biomedical signals, okay? Next is a detection of events and components, okay? For example, in an ECG signal, okay? We have different components. 
if I want to extract any one particular component of my interest, then this circuit will perform that, okay, detection of events and component. For this, we need to write a program. Either uh, nowadays, all the uh, biomedical equipments run on a Java and Python. There will be a program be in the equipments to do this function. Next, analysis of events of waves and feature extraction. From the frequency component, analysis of events, waves, and feature extraction, we are going to extract the particular feature. For this, we give some uh, certain conditions. If this happens, oh, okay, you classify this. Or if this is a condition, you classify as a classifier two, classifier one, like this, okay? Next is a pattern recognition, classification, and diagnosis. Here where the decision makes, okay? Here this, the entire equipment is going to help the doctor to give a final signal where the physician can make the decision, wherein that is called as a diagnosis. Why, need, why we need a diagnosis? Be, based on this diagnosis, a particular treatment will be followed or suggested to the patient. So diagnosis is a very, very important step for physicians to decide what kind of a treatment has to be done for a patient. So biomedical signal again, like ECG. ECG is the one which is a heart signal and EEG, uh, like a electrocardiogram, that is electroencephalogram, okay? It is a brain signal. And EMG is electromyogram, which is acquired from the muscle movement. And EOG, eyeball movement. GSR, galvanic skin resistance. And apart from this, you have an X-ray, CT, MRI, PET, NMR, all those comes under a category of biomedical signal, okay, again, uh, okay. And how do all these signals we get? That is mainly because of the action potential, okay. Here, uh, the action potential is nothing but uh, cell structure you have studied, is it not in the biology? Cell has an inside intracellular and extracellular, okay. Here in the extracellular, you know that there is a sodium, it is abundant with the sodium ions, and in the intracellular, it is abundant with the potassium. And this is called as a uh, potassium channel, okay, potassium channel. Okay, when the cell is at a resting potential, this barrier does not allow sodium ions to get in, inside the cell, okay. This is called as a resting potential, okay. It is a basic neuron uh, design, okay. That is, uh, the each uh, basic neuron uh, has a, a structure that is called as a myelin sheet, axon, and dendrites where this, the nerve conduction happens. Okay, and here the, I was talking to the action potential. When the cell is in a rest, okay, that is when no stimulus is given, the cell is said to be in a resting state, okay. Then it is called as a resting potential. In the resting potential, uh, the sodium ions cannot travel inside to the cell, okay. So when, when the stimulus is given at the resting potential, we have the resting potential, it is in the order of minus 60 to minus 100 millivolts, okay. That means the, at the inside of the cell, it is negatively uh, biased, okay, negative charge because of the abundant potassium ions there, okay. Because the potassium ions have an ionic concentration in a negative, this one, you have a minus 60 to 100 millivolts, okay. When the cell gets stimulus, like for example, you have a different sensors. Uh, when, you, when you see a movie or when you eat something, uh, these are all uh, causes a stimulus to the cell, okay. When the cells get stimulus, this from the resting potential, it goes to the action potential. In an action potential, what happens is, in an action potential, what happens is, uh, the sodium ions uh, get inside the cell and it make, makes the inside of the cell more positive. And it, it, the, peak, the peak will go up to 20 millivolts, okay? Because, because of the entry of a sodium ions to the inside of the cell, then the inside of the cell becomes more positive and it can have an up to 20 millivolts, okay. And once the cell gets, then we call from the resting potential, when it's stimulated, it is called as a polarized, okay. And now from an, uh, a polarized condition, it cannot remain in a polarized condition. Again, it, uh, it has to be repolarized. Again, it will come back to its original state, okay. And this is called as an action potential where this is action potential, okay. Uh, initially, it will be around minus 60 to 70 volts, and when the cell gets uh, the stimulus, okay, it will be polarized, okay, then it will go to 30 millivolts, okay, and again, it will come back to its normal state. 
This is what we are measuring, okay? And now, because each cell is going to produce some chemical energy whenever it gets stimulated. So that is what the chemical energy, what we are measuring through all these instruments, okay? Then uh, this is electron neurogram. This is ENG, is, uh, all these slides I'm going to share with you. These are the now uh, uh, potentials what we acquire. This is called as a electron neurogram, okay? And electron neurogram, which looks like this, okay? which looks like this, okay, the potentials what we acquire, okay. And we have an electroneurogram, which is in the order of, uh, that is very in uh, terms of milli, milli volts, and uh, it travels at a rate of 45 to 70 uh, uh, milli second, milli uh, meters per second, okay. And electromyogram, this is a muscle contraction and relaxation. If we acquire from the muscle contraction and relaxation, the signal is called as an electromyogram. Okay, then you have an electrocardiography, which is called as an ECG signal. Okay, ECG signals are nothing but a generated from the heart movement. Okay, you have a atrium and ventricular. Okay, the atrium and the ventricular movements will cause the ECG signal. Okay, this is how uh, we place the electrodes. We place the electrodes in the right arm, left arm, and the right foot. And this is called as a uh, three-lead ECG. Okay, we are going to measure lead one, lead two, lead three. Uh, by seeing this, uh, okay, the, if we place an electrodes, this is what the type of a signal what we get. This is an ECG signal. It is an atrium contraction will produce a P wave, ventricular contraction will produce a QRS complex, and a ventricular relaxation produce a T wave, and it is a ventricular and atrial con con relaxation will give a U wave. And by just seeing the time signals and an amplitude of this signal, doctors can see whether there is there any abnormality in the heart function, okay? Just by seeing the uh, signal amplitude and at time, we can able, the doctors can able to classify the signal into whether it is a normal or abnormal. And the normal sinus rhythm looks like this, okay? And this is like, if you see, there is a particular like, uh, we have a 72 beats per minute, okay? That uh, comes to 0.8 seconds per one cycle. Okay, all these, uh, the square box, it is represent the time, okay? Each box represents a, a one millisecond, okay? Just by seeing, just by seeing the waveform, how many box it covers and that convert into a seconds, doctors can able to uh, see whether it is a normal or this one. Now, this is an example of a trachycardia, okay? The normal rate is 72. If it goes to 100, in the range of 100, then it is called as a trachycardia condition. This, you see here, the rate is 122. That means the, the waveforms looks closer, okay? Uh, for a particular five box, uh, one, one wave should be like that. They, they know, okay? Doctors know. Now, if, if, just by seeing the waveform, they can analyze whether it is a trachycardia or the next condition, what is called as a bradycardia. That means if the heart rate becomes very, very low, okay? That is uh, around uh, less than 50, then the waveform looks like this. Just by seeing this, Doctors can identify whether the heart rate is normal or it is a trachycardia condition or a bradycardia condition. And uh, this is a ventricular fibrillation. Sometimes what happens uh, just before the heart attacks, the heart beats, the ventricular and atrium beats continuously, okay? Instead of one following the other, what happens is the ventricles and atrials beat uh, uh, simultaneously, we will get this kind of a sinusoidal signal. This condition is called as a ventricular fibrillation then they know that the patient or, a, or the patient or a subject requires immediate treatment of an angiogram and angioblast. Uh, they definitely they'll take the subject to the uh, the particular treatment state. Okay. And uh, now next, uh, okay, EEG signal. EEG signal is an electroencephalogram. Uh, you might have heard it. Okay. Now these are the signals which are acquired from the scalp. That is on the from the head. Okay. And here on, on the head. We have four lobes, okay, like we have a frontal lobes, which are the front portion of the head, okay, prefrontal, uh, okay, there's all these odd numbers on the left side and the even numbers are the right side, that's how uh, they are identified and it is a standard 1020 electrode system, what we call, okay, this is an international standard followed everywhere. Why it is called as a 1020 is from each of these horizontal distance, 
they first measure the distance from Nazion to Anion. Okay, let us say it is uh, three, four, five centimeters. It is 10% of that it is divided and where they place this electrode. And this is a 20% of the, at the round it is 20% and at the middle it is 10%. That's why it is called as a 2020 electrode system, okay. Now we have a frontal region and C is a central region and T3, T4 are the temporal region. Here they take and you have a parietal lobe and occipital lobe. Parietal lobe is just uh, for the ear and the occipital lobe is just uh, exactly back of the head, okay. And each of these electrode will depict some function of the person. For example, in an EEG signal, what do we infer from an EEG signal? EEG signal is divided into four frequency bands. The mainly categorized into four frequency bands. This is you have a delta band, okay. Uh, as I told you, the biomedical signals are very, very low frequency. Just imagine 0 0.5 to 4 hertz signal, delta, okay. This appears when the person is at the sleep stage, okay. When the person is in a deep sleep, that's what we get. It is in a delta wave, okay. If we measure an EEG, it depicts the delta wave in all the lobes, okay, like four lobes, okay. Then theta, theta uh, lies in a band of four to eight hertz, beginning stage of a sleep, okay. Then alpha, that is a principal uh, resting rhythm, that is eight to 13 hertz. And also you have a beta, background activity intense and anxious subject, that is beta wave. That is, for example, now you are hearing with uh, so much of concentration, now, what kind of a wave you, if we, if we take your EEG, what kind of a, a waveform you expect? What kind of a wave you expect? Beta. Beta. Because you are concentrating on something, okay? So you are on also concentrating as well as thinking something. That is thinking is nothing but a cognitive skills, okay? Whenever you think, and uh, this beta appears whenever you do some mathematics, more beta uh, amplitude will be there, okay? And uh, rather than that, instead of a math math function, and you see a horror movie, okay, then the beta wave appears, okay. Uh, then uh, sometimes you will relaxed meditation, okay. If you meditate, then which wave? Alpha, okay. So alpha wave has to be there. And theta, just beginning say, stage of the uh, sleep, okay. So during a meditation, both this theta and alpha will dominate in the EEG signal, okay. And if the, in, uh, these usually in a delta, uh, it, it absorbed in a babies because babies sleep more, we expect uh, sleep stage, okay. But in, for uh, some people in adults also, if delta appears during all the time, some people will be drowsy because of many of the uh, disease condition like Alzheimer's or dementia like that, they are not active. In those subjects, instead of rather than because they cannot think much, then forget whatever the uh, activity they have done in the morning or evening, if you ask, they won't, they won't remember. Like that kind of a patients, they always be drowsy. We can expect a theta waves and a delta waves dominate. Just by doctor seeing those waves, they can uh, diagnose a person whether he is a normal, he can perform a normal activity or not, okay. okay this, is, uh, this is how it looks, okay. Like delta, th delta, you will see very low frequency, delta, theta, alpha, beta, and this is eyes open. If you, if you make an eyes open, this is what you can see. And if you close your eyes, it will look like this. And again, if you open, you will see this, okay? This is how just by seeing these waveforms, doctors can identify few things, okay? Then comes an ECG. I'm not going to talk about an ECG. The next uh, speaker uh, in our coming days, they're going to speak on uh, ECG signal because they're going to talk on a pacemakers and defibrillators. Definitely they'll give you an introduction to an ECG signal. So I'm not touching this, okay? And we have a carotid pulse, okay? Which is uh, got uh, from the, acquired from the carotid artery. And we have an vibromyogram, okay? Vibration of the uh, con contraction of a skeletal muscle. Then you have a vibrothogram, okay? Okay, these are the uh, examples of a different biomedical signals, okay. Now comes to artifact sources. And as I told you, when we are acquiring a signal, 
there are many artifacts are going to uh, embedded in the required signal, okay? For example, a patient related, any minor body movement, okay? Like for example, when an ECG is acquiring, if the patient moves his hand or head or uh, the legs, then this uh, causes a minor, the movements will cause a muzzle artifacts into the signal, okay? For example, ECG, when we take an ECG, uh, doctors uh, or uh, the physician who says the assistant, don't move their say, right? Even doing an MRI or a CT or ECG, EG, they advise the patients not to move for a while uh, during the acqu acquisition of a signal because to avoid any movement uh, artifacts, okay? Then EMG, muzzle movement, then ECG. This is also caused uh, like a patient related means whenever we are acquiring a respiratory signal, respiratory signal is nothing but a breathing signal, okay? Uh, during the breathing signal, ECG signal will also get embedded in the respiratory signal. So because of the interrelated of the systems inside our body, this call caused uh, when we acquire one signal, definitely it will be embedded with the other kind of a signal. And you have an eye movement, okay? In, in, in an ECG, even some eye movement, rapid eye movement we do, that will cause or embed, uh, include some uh, artifacts in the signal. Then sweating, all those because of the patient related. Then technical, what are the technical artifacts? Like for example, 50 to 60 hertz noise. Like uh, any, any equipment, we will plug, plug it here, right? The, there will be a fluctuations. Those fluctuations will also get into the signal. So our first aim is to any biomedical engineer or uh, uh, who is operating the uh, equipment, they should know how to remove the 60 hertz noise. Nowadays, everything is in embedded in a software program and the hardwares are there to remove this 60 hertz or 50 hertz noise which comes from the plugging of a equipment, okay? Next, you have an impedance fluctuations. Impedance. Uh, you have any equipment will have some input impedance and output impedance. If they are much, not matched properly, then it will have a, because of an impedance mismatch, uh, we get a uh, artifacts. So how to eliminate this impedance match, mismatching? We need to use what are called as a buffers, okay? Impedance matching circuits, which are called as a buffers. Okay, buffers will like, for example, you are cascading uh, many of the stages in an uh, amplifier. The impedance has to be matched. In between, we use a buffers which uh, uh, match the impedance. Then cable movements. Sometimes the cable should not be wide, you know, like a round, okay? And it should be a flat usually, okay? Uh, that if we round the cable, then that will also have a uh, intermagnetic effects. Because of the magnetic effects, the, uh, the cable will have a artifacts in the signal. And the broken wire contacts, okay? This has to be taken care while uh, acquiring a biomedical signal. Then too much electrode paste or jelly or uh, uh, dried pieces. We should not use, uh, like uh, whenever uh, we are using an electrode on the patient, we use a jelly. Just again to, uh, our impedance is very high, like uh, 23K to 50K. But all these, in, the machines should have an impedance of 1K. So in order to reduce the impedance and uh, in order to make it to match with an equipment, we, we use a jelly to minimize the impedance from the skin, okay? So, so for here, we should not put too much, too much of jelly, in, uh, jelly or paste to the, this one. How much ever required, the small quantity we have to use. Then low battery. Low battery also causes some artifacts, okay? Then uh, we'll come to what are the difficulties of biomedical signal processing, okay? Here, accessibility of the variables to measurement, okay? Like, for example, some intestinal movement and uh, like uh, uh, all those uh, things, if you want to measure it with to accessible or to put the electrodes on the intestine is very difficult. So what we do, we do an endoscopy, okay? Like, uh, that is one of the major challenge. Accessibility of the variables to the measurement is one of the uh, great challenge. So therefore, we have invasive equipments and non-invasive uh, data acquisition, okay? Then variability of the signal source. Each person has a different uh, uh, waveform. Like for example, if you take an ECG of mine, an ECG of yours, each one will have a different uh, uh, variations in the signal, okay? That also makes a challenge in a biomedical signal processing. Then interrelationship and interactions among physiological systems. As I told you, all our organs inside are interconnected to one. Uh, this causes a difficulty in a processing, okay? Then effect of the instrumentation or procedure on the system. If he does not, or uh, whoever the operating the machine, if he does not follow the instructions properly, then uh, that may lead to a uh, mislead or a misacquire in the image, okay? In image or a signal, 
it may not be proper, then a diagnosis may go wrong and the treatment, if they give a treatment, this happens so many times. So a technician should handle the instrument properly with the proper training, okay? Then physiological artifacts and interferences, it has to be eliminated properly again, otherwise it will be uh, misdiagnosed, okay? Then energy limitation, then patient safety, all those makes a challenge in a signal processing, okay? Are you bored? Monotonous we are speaking, okay? Okay, next we'll come to the signal processing. I hope you understood the, the just the, what is the concept of a biomedical signal and the instrumentation and what care has to be taken because in the future lectures you are uh, dealing with many of the medical devices. This makes you fundamentals, to know the fundamentals, I hope you are cleared, okay? Next we comes to the uh, signal processing, okay? So once we acquire the signal from an instrument or a subject, next what is this, what is the step, okay? So signal conditioning. First thing, as I told you, artifacts removing and amplification has to be done, okay? Next is a time domain analysis. We have two types of an analysis. One is a time domain analysis. In a time domain analysis, for example, now I have an ECG signal. If I want to process in a time domain analysis, from having an ECG signal with me or an EEG signal with me, what are the parameters I can extract? In a time domain analysis, I can extract the statistical parameters. What do you mean by statistical parameters? Huh? What are the statistical parameters? What is the statistical? Statistics means in the statistics, I think you in a high school and all you have studied. Statistics, what are the parameters you studied in a stat statistics? Mean, variance, all those things, okay? From the signal, we can measure the, what is the minimum of a signal, maximum of a signal, variance, mean, standard deviation, histogram, all those can be measured from the signal, okay? Because this gives some information to the doctors, okay? By measuring the mean of a signal, median of a signal, all those things, okay? It gives some information because these are the parameters which can be used to classify the signal. Like for example, I take a 20 seconds of an EG signal. I can measure a mean of a signal. If mean is so much, we can classify this into class. This much you can classify into the class two, not only the mean, along with the mean, there are certain parameters are there. These stands the parameters for classification purpose, okay? So we can uh, measure a Okay, okay, statistical parameters, then higher order statistical parameters. The kurtosis is one of the higher order pa higher order statistical parameters. Okay, then uh, correlation coefficient. I think, have you come across a correlation? Correlation means, what do you mean by relation? How similar it is. Correlation means how similarity. Like for example, I'll take ECG today and tomorrow. I can measure correlation coefficient in order to find how similar was my EG, ECG today and tomorrow. By seeing the similarity, even we can say whether this person is having a constant ECG signal throughout the day from the day one or day two like that, okay? So it, it, it serves as a correlation coefficient. It will also give some uh, hints to the diagnosis purpose, okay? One is time domain analysis. That means as a signal itself, we are taking some parameters. Another one is a frequency domain analysis. What is this frequency domain analysis? We are converting from time domain to frequency domain. I will, uh, Fourier transform is one of the method where we are uh, converting from time domain to frequency domain. What is an advantage of a uh, Fourier transform? What information it will give? What information will give Fourier transform? Okay, for example, uh, if you say, uh, if you take an EEG signal, as I told you, it can have a different frequencies, right? Like uh, uh, 0.5 to 4 is delta, 4 to 8 is theta, and 8 to, 12, 8 to 12 is alpha, and again, all those frequencies are embedded. You want to know what frequency, at what, fre just by seeing the waveform, we cannot analyze what are the frequency, dominant frequency embedded in the signal. So what I do, I'll take an FFT of a signal. By taking an FFT of the signal, it will give only one peak or many peaks in whichever the signal has a dominant frequency. 
For example, if you give an EEG, if I found at 20 hertz is a peak, okay, so in a frequency domain. That's what by writing a program, you can convert a time domain into frequency domain. You can plot the spectrum from an SSD signal. Just by seeing the spectrum, you are able to know what is the dominant frequency in the signal, okay. So frequency information can be obtained in a SSD transformation or frequency domain analysis. And you have a discrete Fourier transform. Okay, you have a discrete Fourier uh, transform and the spectral estimation. Spectral estimation is again nothing but a uh, frequency components, then power spectrum density, then uh, short term uh, discrete Fourier transform and wavelet transforms, all those things are used to extract a frequency content in the signal, okay. These are the one, again you have a coding has to be done to extract all these parameters. Again, as I told you, uh, frequency parameters also serves as one of the parameter for classification. Okay, then ECG recording of a healthy bit, this I am skipping it, okay. Okay, now uh, just I will uh, brief you some of the works done in an EEG signal processing. Okay, this is how it looks, okay. Okay, these are the electrodes placements. These are the prefrontal, frontal, and the uh, up of the, uh, just right above the ears. It is called as a temporal and backside of the ears are called as a occipital. Each one will have a different uh, performance it can show. Okay, uh, frontal region, the cognitive and uh, uh, occipital, the vision parameters it will show, okay? Like that each one will have, and the central C3, C4, motor and sensory activities can be acquired, okay? Like to understand the brain mechanism, like uh, mainly the EG signals are used to understand the brain mechanism. When I say brain mechanism, there are different parameters, whether in a brain can be used for structure study or function study or behavior study. So we have from the brain, we can study the structures, okay? If I want to know the brain structure, we have to go for a CT, MRI, and DTA. CT, you know, the expansion of computer tomography, and MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, diffusion tension imaging, okay? Like, uh, okay, structures. From these things, we are able to identify the, like for example, the classification of whether a tumor is not, a tumor, how big the tumor is, whether the cancer is there or not, like that for those studies, MRI, CT, and the DTIs, the structural studies we use. Like if you want to know the functionality, we have to go for an EEG, ECOG, MEG, functional MRI, PET, and SPECT. I think all these you have studied in physics, right? The PET, SPECT, I think the basics of those things you might have studied in physics, okay? Next, for behavior analysis, we have to go for a cognition, assessment, retaining, Nowadays, all the psychologists are using all these psychology study, okay? And uh, these EEG also, EEG and psychology, uh, psychologists are seeing EEG signal as well as, well as these uh, uh, studies, okay? Cognition for assessment and retraining, okay? And this is a comparison. I'm not uh, touching up this, okay? This, uh, there are uh, some advantages and disadvantages in each of the mechanism, okay? Based on our application for what uh, we are going to acquire the signal, we need to go for the EEG study or uh, the MRI study, all those things. And this is the labels for uh, points according to 20, 1020 electrode placement system, okay? As I told you earlier, okay? This is how uh, it looks. Now, uh, you, when you say EEG machines, it comes with a two channel, eight channel, 16 channel, 256 channel, okay? And where do we find these machines? In uh, uh, mainly in uh, Nimans and uh, many of the EEG acquisition labs are there in Bangalore. We see that. The, but the expensive one is a 256 uh, channel uh, machine, wherein if you see all this, so many electrodes are placed. Okay, this the 256 channel will cost up to 40 lakhs, and uh, two uh, two channel will uh, machine will cost four lakhs. So the ECG machine or equipment cost varies from. 2 lakhs or 2 lakhs to 40 lakhs. Why this is so uh, variation in this? Okay, 2 channel means only minimum information we get, the resolution will be minimum. If we go for a 256 channel, the re resolution will be more, more spatial information we can get. From the 2 channel, let us say front channel from these 2, if I take, 
it doesn't give much information. If we go for a 256 channel from each of the position on the scalp, we get more information, okay? Up to specifically for, uh, from the point wherever the electrode is placed, okay, we can get the information. So that's why 256 channel machine will cost more compared to the two channel machine. When, uh, uh, when uh, research and uh, when any precise diagnosis is required, they go for a 256 machine. Uh, uh, in Bangalore, you have a 256 channel machines are there in Animans and Esvesa. Esvesa, you might have heard, uh, the, it is a yoga university in Jigni. They have this 256 machine, okay? You can visit anytime there. The research uh, center, Anveshana is there. Whenever you go for there, just you can walk into the Anveshana lab. Definitely there, they'll show all these machines, okay? So what we are going to study from the EEG signal? We have a particular function for the left brain and a right brain, okay? These are the uh, parameters wherein from an EEG signal, these are the parameters we look into. Like for example, left brain, logic thinking, okay? If the left brain is more, okay, that it represents the logic thinking, analysis, and the sequencing, linear, the mathematics, language, facts, think in words, words of songs, and computation. We look for the left brain activity to seek all this information. Got the point? From an, e, uh, from an EEG, we may think what, it, what the doctors may find it, okay? Uh, if they look into the right brain activity as a different uh, modality and the left brain uh, signal in a different perspective to seek this information. So what information they get from the right brain activity? Like creativity, imagination, holistic thinking, then intuition, arts, rhythm, nonverbal feelings, visualization, tune of songs, daydreaming, all these architects. And uh, if you see the painters and the full-time meditator, we can see their right brain activity is more. Okay, the, we also have done so many experiments on this. You too, if you want to perform some research or work, you are always welcome to our lab. We have uh, many EEG equipments are there. Bring some proposal, okay? Uh, we'll allow you to acquire the signal and you can do some study on it, okay? Okay, all this uh, placement of electrodes, how we uh, decide, okay? All these uh, placements, each of the electrode depicts some action of a brain. So whatever the application we require, we place the electrodes on that position and acquire the signal and do some time and frequency analysis and then make the conclusion. This is how it follows, okay? So EEG waves, again, it uh, each uh, in a different uh, uh, EEG waves, okay? Alpha waves, when they relax, and beta waves, when they are into action, and theta waves, just awake, and delta waves, okay? And now again, the gamma waves is more than 30 hertz are divided into gamma waves, okay? EEG artifacts, see this how it looks, okay? So many artifacts. This has to be removed before we analyze the signal, okay? There are, for uh, how do we remove artifacts? There are many softwares we need, many programs we need to write to remove these artifacts, okay? As because we initially know the artifacts are in what frequency, we need to remove that, okay? And this is one of the challenge in uh, removing the artifacts is a major challenge in a biomedical signal processing, okay? Then uh, eye blink artifacts, see this in a, a prefrontal, because eye blink is very close to the frontal area. We can see the, if we blink uh, our eye during the EEG acquisition, this is how it looks, okay? We need to remove those signals, okay? And eye moment, EOG, this is how it looks, okay? This is muscle artifacts. We can't get any EEG information. So that's why we need to ask a patient when not to move during the EEG acquisition. Just as soon as the acquisition starts, the, the physician will be knowing the patient is moving, okay, muscle artifacts. Then again and again, he keeps on instructing the patient not to move, just to avoid these artifacts in the signal, okay? And uh, as I told you in the block diagram, the first one is a transducer, right? we are going to use an electrodes, okay? These are the different kinds of electrodes used to acquire the signal. Whether it, it may be an EEG signal or an ECG signal, it's a disposable electrode. The round one you might have seen, okay? Th that's the one which are uh, used for a ECG acquisition, okay, in the hospital. Those are called as a disposable uh, electrodes. 
that is gel-less and pre-gel. There are two types we'll get, okay? One is gel-less means we need to put an extra gel. Uh, one in comes along with a gel, okay? And uh, these disposable electrodes cost from five rupees to 10 rupees, okay? And reusable disc electrodes, gold, silver, stainless steel, and tin. Why are those uh, many uh, electrodes are there? Okay, based on, again, the based on uh, application, we are going to use, but gold and uh, gold and tin electrodes are very expensive. One electrode will cost 2,500 rupees. So whenever we are using a gold and tin, uh, we whenever we seek a very high resolution data, then only we go for a gold and tin electrodes. Otherwise, silver, silver electrode, what we are using in the laboratory, that costs around five rupees to 10 rupees, okay? Then headbands and electrode caps, again, these comes with a very expensive, and uh, it comes in a three range, okay? One medium and uh, small, medium and uh, uh, bigger size. And again, uh, these headbands and electrode caps cost very expensive. And uh, it comes around uh, 2.5 lakhs for just for a caps, okay? Then uh, saline-based electrodes we have, then a needle electrodes. Needle electrodes we usually rarely we use, okay? Not many. See, that's how it looks, okay? Tin plated, tin silver plated. Silver, silver chloride, this is what we use in a lab, gold plated. As because the tin and the gold have a very high resolution, only when we require a very, very accurate uh, for a research purpose and all, we use those things. Otherwise, in a laboratory, we use a silver, silver chloride electrode. And once we acquire the signal, how do we store the signal, okay? Just as I told you, whatever the signal, biomedical signal, all those will be in an analog, continuous, okay? This continuous signal cannot be given to the processor. So we have to digitize that analog to digital conversion and store it, okay? There are different file formats to store this analog uh, to digital converted signal. Okay, what are, can you see that? Okay, like you have a, you have a uh, dot dat format and uh, dot raw format, dot seq format, dot dat, dot edf, that is European data file format, and uh, they, there are like dot .eeg, log, dot .edf. These are the particular, each machine has a different formats to store the signal. And before processing the signal, we should know in which format the signals are stored. Just by knowing the format, in which format it is known, we need to write a code to read the signal from that, okay? And this signal will have sometimes the patient information in a few lines and then next the data. And how does this data looks? It is, it will be in an Excel sheet, okay? Excel like sheet. And for example, for each of the signal, like 250 samples per second is usually used for a biomedical signal. Like if we acquire a four second data, four into 250, thousand samples will be there on an Excel sheet in a column wise. That's how it is. By writing a program, we can access those signals, plot it, all those things we can write it and process it. What are the applications of ECG? It can be used for the research, health and medical, then human computer interaction for BCA application. Human computer interaction means for BCA application, mainly in a paraplegic patients. If the patient in a paraplegic patient, the patient cannot move his uh, hand or a leg just by his eye movement, just by eye movement, uh, some actions can be for, performed. Nowadays, uh, switch on and off like uh, he can move his wheelchair, all those applications are being done with the human computer interaction, okay? Okay, just uh, one work what we have done with an art of living, because in my, during my PhD work, I have developed an eight channel uh, uh, EEG board I have developed and uh, the software, uh, the uh, art of living people, they wanted, uh, you know that art of, art of living is uh, mainly for Sudarshan Kriya Yoga. They wanted some EEG analysis to be done for oh, entire during Sudarshana Kriya Yoga. What is the EEG activity? They want to study that, okay? And uh, that's what I helped for some part in analysis part and published the paper also. Okay, this is how the EEG signals of different channels looks like the main EEG signal, okay? This is alpha, beta, delta, theta, and gamma. In a machine itself, it will, if we set the preset, the channels, uh, so that it will uh, it will filter and show the plotted waveforms. And this we take it into the Excel sheet and analyze in a time domain and frequency domain, okay? 
and this is like alpha before the meditation we do and alpha after the meditation we did. Like for example, we did uh, uh, this work for 43 uh, subjects, okay? And in that 43 subjects, fewer them are uh, uh, long-term practitioners and few of them are uh, beginners, all those uh, male and female, all those study we did. And as I told you during the meditation, the alpha way what we look, okay? Just if you see this for the 10 subjects data which we plotted, alpha before the meditation was this much as an amplitude, but after the meditation, how it has increased, okay? This is what we have showed in a simple uh, graph, okay? And uh, we have a, what is called as a topo plot. Again, this is a different software are there. If you give the signal, this is a topo plot wherein uh, what is a signal strength in the frontal region and it is a central region and it is an occipital region. This also it is plotted uh, in the different frequency bands. See, 9 hertz, 14 hertz and 21 hertz. If we see that 9 hertz, we can see the more strength in a frontal part and the temporal in all the regions the, by just by meditating we can the least all the lobes are equally affected it again depends on subjective if we make a meditation strongly with the focus then we get otherwise we don't get okay uh, this is how we can see this uh, the red indicates a more strength signal okay blue indicates a less strength okay we can just see the graphically uh, how the signal strength varies in different lobes okay this is called as a topo plot and uh, again, this is in a different channels we studied just by seeing the color plots, it is possible. Again, this is a comparison between uh, long-term practitioners and uh, short-term practitioners. All those things we could do and uh, infer some information. And this is a trend plot. If you see, there's a so entire Sudarshana Kriya has uh, some 18 durations we divided like uh, pranayama and om chanting, bastrika, all those things, okay? And again, in a warm chanting and bastrika, we can see the more uh, delta waves and alpha waves. See that if we the entire Sudarshana Kriya Yoga, alpha waves were dominated entire Sudarshana Kriya Yoga. Okay? This is how uh, the inference what we got. Okay? Again, from this plot, if we see the orange color, this is for each of the subject. As I told you, we did this uh, uh, research work for uh, analysis from subject, 43 subjects. We plotted the uh, alpha waves in this trend plot, okay? If we see this for each color plot we have given, the orange represents here the right frontal area, okay? If we see after meditation for all the subjects, the orange color spread is more. That is what we could infer, okay? That is, again, we have done some time and frequency domain analysis and we have plotted this plot and we could see that after the meditation, for each of the person, how much is the right frontal? As I told in a previous slide, when the person is relaxed, his right, uh, right and a frontal portion will have a more dominant frequency band, okay? That's how we got whatever the hypothesis we had. We are here, we are proving it, that's all, okay? Uh, this is in the uh, right frontal area. For uh, many of the people, it is more. Okay, next what? The big picture of processing is database seed, then we have artifact removal, then FFT and discrete wavelet transforms, next feature extraction, then again database seed. Okay, this is what uh, we are the type processing looks like, okay? This is also again the time plots. And uh, some of the textbooks are there if you are interested. And definitely I am going to share these slides to you. And if you are interested uh, uh, still more, you can refer these or the very good books for biomedical signal analysis and even the, some MATLAB programs are there, this you can try and uh, for your uh, most probably uh, new education policy or uh, thing, you have to do some small projects in your studies, I hope, I believe, right? Any of the in a physics or in a biology, anything in a science, a small uh, project you can make, okay? And there are certain MATLAB programs are there which are quite interesting, okay? You can uh, refer those books and you can uh, just try those MATLAB programs and present it like uh, alternative for alternative assessment. You can do that, okay? If you're still, if you are any further assistant, okay. And one more thing I wanted to tell you, okay? Let us say you don't have an equipment, but you want a data set, biomedical data set to work. Always you can go to uh, go and visit what is called as a PhysioNet. There you can get all kinds of a data 
and you can just in an excel form only you can do uh, many processing okay like uh, statistical parameters you can extract fft you can extract so many experiments you can do okay data if you want you can definitely you can uh, download the data from the physionet bank and one more thing i wanted to tell you is uh, the brain museum have you heard of the the museum which you might have heard and visited in your school days is the vishweshwaraya museum right i hope all of you have visited now they have uh, uh, renovated if you are not seen just i uh, insist you to go and see they have renovated and uh, very well it's very well and apart from that vishweshwaraya museum one more museum many won't know that is brain museum have you heard of it yes oh good okay okay good we usually take uh, every year our students uh, industry visit or like a uh, uh, visit in a as a part of an industrial visit we take uh, them to brain museum it's a very good museum worth to visit there and you need to take a pre year appointment you can just if you mail them uh, they'll allow you uh, a lot of one day and definitely you can take your students and uh, their uh, explaining everything just literally you can uh, touch all the parts of the body here you can hold it and they'll just see here the brain parts we have holded the students have holded and they learnt and they enjoyed a lot okay this is what just a take home message for you people just explore work hard and work hard definitely everything comes to you okay and uh, in future if you want any information regarding this you always contact me with a contact number and this is my mail id okay thanks for uh, hearing patiently a monotonous talk maybe i don't know how much it gone to your head if it has gone to your head i am happy and you are also happy to take home some message to you okay thanks a lot and i thank uh, principal kamala and your vice principal belleth for giving me this an opportunity to share my uh, knowledge to you people thanks a lot Uh, four from the right uh, side and four from the left side you can acquire the signal the instrumentation part i developed uh, there it is a challenging and also the memory architecture vlsi memory architecture what i have done okay and again uh, uh, in along with the svasa and art of living all the signal classification and the signal analysis all those things i used a matlab for processing and analysis is done and i published a paper okay again uh, you can you can see my some of the papers just you google in a vijay lakshmi k papers you can get those papers okay you can just refer those things you can read that papers okay as i told you some time domain and frequency domain analysis is done you can refer those papers okay now always mail me if you have any inquiries okay okay change Second to second, the brain waves change, sir. 
and what we did is we see before doing any research work or any work you should have a protocol like protocol in the sense what are the procedure you are going to do for sudarshana kriya yoga first one minute a uh, stand still we made them to sit quiet then uh, we they made a cassette for uh, this is for one hour cassette okay for one hour cassette they keep on listening we place them an electrode during that cassette instruction whatever they are getting simultaneously data is acquiring and they are performing all these different stages in a sudarshana kriya yoga we have acquired a signal again after acquiring one hour data for example if you say for one second we have a 256 samples we take a four second data we have averaged it and then analyzed it got the point for one hour data a chemical change yeah second to second it keeps on changing only during that performance we measured it and we saw is there any commonality between all the subjects and we remove the artifacts first thing is we remove the artifacts and uh, through an averaging technique each 4 seconds data is analyzed and then we are uh, coming to some conclusions and commonality we check for any commonality for between all the subjects i hope you got it mm. hello yeah common that's what i showed you no right portion the orange color that that's what we observed and also one more thing uh, for a long term practitioners alpha amplitude was more compared to the short term practitioners like for example since one year those who are practicing uh, sudarshana kriya they have a alpha wave amplitude is more okay compared to the short term practitioners that's what uh, we got into more relax yes yes more relax and even sleeping deep sleeping alpha and relax relax the alpha is relax theta is just arose delta is sleeping theta is just arose alpha is relax and during a meditation what happens they will be in a theta shifting from theta to alpha so it's not only we measure alpha we take a ratio of alpha theta ratio all those things i didn't explain there are there are certain uh, parameters are inherent in it alpha to theta ratio we measure oh, got it okay this al- uh, sometimes what happens is in a relaxed and alert people sometimes it, during this for few people what we got is alpha is also more at the same time beta is also more this is uh, this is one of the major uh, uh, confusion uh, i didn't uh, uh, tell there some people are relaxed at the same time they are alert got it that is a effect of meditation and this occurred in only for the long term practitioners even though you can see they are relaxed but at the same time they are alert also therefore alpha and beta both are high for long term practitioners got it I, i i think you got it okay and for a short term practitioners maybe they are in a alpha and theta do, uh, domination can occur for long term practitioners even though they look like relaxed at the same time they are alert also so beta is also more even though they are closing their eyes and uh, doing the sudarshana kriya yoga the beta at the same time the beta value shows for them high that means it shows they are alert okay that's how the meditation capacity you can be in a relaxed and alert state that is one of the advantage of meditation beta yeah, combination maybe in the, that not only we dependent on this there are certain questionnaires also there sir actually some questionnaires are also took and uh, we have combinedly we have come to the conclusion and again everything is more subjective there is no scientific evidence even the doctors they won't believe whatever this happens we whatever we engineers so much we say and prove even the doctors community they won't believe unless they want the scientific evidence that's why in our uh, india all this ayurvedic and homeopathy why they are failing is doctors community is not accepting because of uh, less scientific uh, evidence even though the patients are cured this you might have uh, uh, all of us have seen giridhar kaje has developed some ayurvedic uh, thing and uh, trials also he did 
but the Indian government, they did not approve it because of the ethical clearance issues. There is so much background uh, thing, business, uh, so much is there from the government and also, <laughs> we can't talk all this. Uh, yeah, that's what, the, because of the less scientific evidence, they're not approving all this uh, medicine. Otherwise, even our ancient uh, medicine has uh, more curing effect and uh, immediate effects the people are less hesitant to use this. Only a few people are uh, using our Ayurveda and homeopathic medicine. Uh, less, few number of people. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, strong. The belief, belief. The main thing is belief. If we believe and use it, definitely uh, we have an effect more in Ayurveda and uh, homeopathy. Everything what is, we believe. Okay, thank you. I thank, uh, madam, I thank you. Uh, this, uh, yeah, uh, thank you for giving me this an opportunity to your principal and vice principal and the whole management. Thank you, madam. Uh, good morning to everyone present here.